Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Yelm High School. Um, this is a very important um, and wonderful ceremony that we're going to have tonight. And we have a lot of different partners, a lot of different moving parts um, in celebration of a, a really great event that's taken several years to manifest. And it's really um, a positive and wonderful change for not only Yelm High School, but also for our district. So we hope that you enjoy what you'll learn tonight and, and uh, take away some great collaboration leading up to this artwork dedication. I wanna start tonight by introducing some of our uh, guests and elected officials. I'm gonna start with our amazing school board. They love it when I say that collectively they have 107 years of experience uh, together. And um, Debbie Edwards will say, no, that's not all hers. Um, that's all of five of them put together. Um, but I wanna start with our board president. I'd like to introduce Mr. Mark Rowetter. Board Vice President, Bill Haas. I know Bill's here, so there he is right here. Um, Director Debbie Edwards. Director Denise Hendrickson. And uh, Director Donna Edwards was not able to make it tonight. I hope she is able to come in virtually. We are um, blessed to have two of our Thurston County Commissioners with us tonight. Uh, I'd like to introduce Gary Edwards and also Ty Menser. Thank you for being here. Part of our program tonight is about our collaboration with the Washington Arts Commission. And I would like to introduce several members. I hope we got them all on our, our check-in form tonight. Uh, I'd like to introduce Andre Bouchard from the Arts Commission. Thank you for being here. Janae Huber, who's been one of our organizers. Where's Janae? Right in front of me. Thank you. Uh, Mike Sweeney. Thank you for being here. Uh, David and Joanne Franklin. Welcome. Thank you. Um, and Claire Dean. Thank you for being here. We also um, are blessed to have members of the Nisqually Tribal Council. Uh, it's my privilege to introduce Hanford McLeod, one of the tri tribal counselors. He's also been one of our organizing Hanford seat six, is that correct? Thank you. And also Antoinette Squally, the vice chair of the Nisqually Tribe. Thank you for being here. As we move into our program tonight, I wanna to start with acknowledging that this region is indigenous land inhabited by the Nisqually Tribal Nation. We want to honor the Nisqually Tribe and their connection to this land since time immemorial. It is my privilege to introduce our principal here at Yelm High School in his first year. He inherited this project, and I know he's learned a lot along the way. Let me please introduce Mr. Curtis Cleveringa. Thank you, Brian. Um, I feel like I'm stepping in the middle of a, an amazing project and uh, I get to celebrate and I am excited to be here. Um, it's an honor to, to not only be the principal here, but to um, have this project um, represented in our high school. Um, first, I want to welcome any of our students or staff or parents that are joining us um, online tonight. Um, it is because of you that we are here. The project started because of student voice and uh, we were able to take that and um, listen and you guys were advocates of this project, and uh, we were able to gather the resources and get everything accomplished. In doing so, um, first, we need to thank John Johnson, our former principal. Um, without his dedication, the time, the energy that he put into this, um, I don't think we would be here. Um, but he listened. He listened to our kids. He, um, he took the time, took the energy, and uh, um, got us to the point that we are right now. So I'm super thankful and uh, I'm happy to step in and um, make sure that uh, the project continues on, not only aesthetically, but in spirit here. Um, I also want to take a, a moment and just say thank you to Chris Hansen, Chris Hansen and our entire maintenance team um, from where the project did exist to where um, it needed to be to get it to the Arts Commission. That took our maintenance team a lot of hours, and uh, Chris has a thousand things going on, um, but he was able to devote the time it needed to get that accomplished. Um, Lastly, um, I want to share the impact that this the Big Bird is going to have on our campus. I mentioned this aesthetically. It is beautiful. Um, it is overlooking our entire campus, the hub of our, our commons here. Um, but it's also the spirit of the project and the, the education that we need to continue. The spirit of this will live on for generations. Um, I would like to pass the time on now to Janae. So, Janae. Thank you so much. I'm really um, pleased to be here tonight. 
Um, so thank you to the Yelm Community Schools for having me. Um, it's really my pleasure to celebrate Marvin Oliver's artwork um, and its history at this school in particular. Um, as noted, I'm Janae Huber. I'm the collections manager for the Washington State Arts Commission. So it's my job to try to keep tabs on all of the artworks in the collection. Um, and already our commissioner, Andre Bouchard, has been mentioned, but I just want to thank him for being here tonight, along with um, an additional colleague, Jonah Barrett, um, who's over here, and uh, a couple of colleagues that I think are watching from home, Adam Faw and Jared um, Moore, had a huge part in this project, um, but weren't able to be here in person tonight. So I think it's um, important to talk about really how this project came to be because the story is a wonderful one. Um, a student is the one that drew um, Principal Johnson or former Principal Johnson's attention to this artwork and its need for conservation. Carmen Hauck um, is the one who, who raised this issue and without her understanding of the importance of caring for artworks by indigenous artists, um, and her action in alerting the school leadership, we would not be here today. So because the Washington State Arts Commission is the owner of this artwork, um, pr former Principal Johnson reached out to us for assistance. And I'm so grateful for his partnership and also the ongoing interest of the Yelm Community Schools to continue caring for this artwork, to make sure that it's documented and that we continue to, to share its story. So even with changing staff and leadership, a stressful pandemic, um, they've made it a priority to pause and celebrate this wonderful artwork and its restoration. We're also thrilled and honored that the Nisqually Nation is helping us to rededicate this artwork, creating a bridge from its past to its future. Um, I would also like to acknowledge Brigitte Ellis. Um, Brigitte is the artist's widow and longtime creative partner. She's extremely knowledgeable about Marvin Oliver's working methods, and she was a generous and invaluable guide on this project. Um, thank you, Brigitte, for sharing your insights and your with kindness and clarity. So I wanna tell you a little bit more about this artwork and Marvin Oliver, and then I'm gonna hand the microphone over to our incredible conservation team. So this artwork is part of the state art collection. Um, it was created when Yelm High School was built in the 1970s, and it was paid for through Washington State's Percent for Art Law, um, which declares that one half of 1% of the state's portion of construction costs for new schools is set aside for public art. This artwork is one of nearly 5,000 that are located at Washington's colleges and universities, our state agencies, and public schools across Washington. This is not a museum collection. It is a collection of artworks that are out in the public, uh, in the spaces where we work, study, and live. And we feel that art makes our public spaces better. The state art collection is selected by community representatives, the very people who experience this artwork on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and Yelm High School, <clears throat> excuse me, actually includes three state art collection works. Um, in addition to this incredible work that we're celebrating tonight, it includes a second work by Marvin Oliver <clears throat> that's located um, in the theater. So if you ever have a chance to see a performance here in the future times when we get to do that again, um, you should take a look for it. And uh, artist Virginia Paquette's Tornado over here shares this commons area. Marvin Oliver had an important role as a teacher and a culture bearer. He was a master carver, sculptor, and printmaker. He taught at the University of Washington for more than 40 years, influencing generations of students. He passed on his knowledge of indigenous traditions, creative practices, and he nurtured a community of creativity among his students. Early in his tenure at UW, um, Oliver began holding an annual dinner that was known as Raven's Feast to celebrate the accomplishments of American Indian and Alaska Native graduates. And he gifted each student a print in honor of their achievement. We are all the beneficiaries of Marvin's skill and willingness to pass his knowledge on to future generations. So with that, I'd like to pass the mic to a couple of beloved collaborators. Um, Claire Dean is an art conservator of three-dimensional objects, 
And David Franklin is a professional artist who was also a student of Marvin Oliver's and studio assistant. Um, you should keep your eyes out for one of David's newest works at uh, Climate Pledge Arena in Seattle should you find yourself at a Kraken game. This one, I don't think it's... No, is it working? Oh yeah, there it goes. It's working. <laughs> You or me? I can go. I can go. Go. <laughs> um, thanks, everybody, for being here. Uh, I'd like to thank the Nisqually tribe for participating and being here and for being on your tribal land. Um, I'd like to thank the Washington State Art Commission. I think the, uh, you know, Washington State Art Commission does a lot in our state, more than any other organization, I think, to support Indigenous artists and to train them and you know, they've trained me. And so we are super fortunate in our state to have an organization like this that, that grows and nurtures young artists. And I think that you'll see as, pub, as you see public art projects around the area that Washington State Art Commission is in the forefront of engaging and hiring native artists and doing, uh, you know, prestigious projects. And without that, you know, none of us really have the indigenous expression in our home the way it would be other, without that. So I'd like to thank the Washington State Art Commission. Um, I also think that, you know, not everybody knows Marvin Oliver, the Oliver family's impact on our state and indigenous cultures. And, you know, Marvin's father Emmett, you know, helped, was really the one that started the whole canoe journey, you know, and the canoe journeys have really been the vehicle for, you know, a cultural rebirth across the Salish Sea. I mean, it has affected incredible amounts of lives. And, and then Marvin, through his work at the University of Washington, you know, just adds to that. And the Oliver family is full of incredible gifted leaders. And, you know, all our community as a whole is better, you know, with the Oliver family in it and what they have done for us. And continue to do with young people. And, you know, Marvin, you know, was a friend of mine and, you know, he got more joy out of young people's accomplishments and, you know, graduating from college than you can imagine. He was a, a super joyful person, you know, and one of the things that he taught me was really how to let loose a little bit, how to bring some color into the artwork, how to have smoother and, you know, less stiff line work and all of these kind of basic things. And, and he did it so joyfully. I mean, uh, even when Marvin was not well, he had a whole plan for what his life was going to be and what he was going to do and big plans, you know, and, and that was a beautiful thing. So, you know, Marvin really gave me, he reminded me to be joyful in all of this and to, only be supportive of people and their accomplishments. And so I think like when you have this, a piece like this in your school, it represents a huge educational legacy and cultural legacy. And, you know, the indigenous expressions you see today are because of the hard work of people like this and families like this. So, you know, you're very fortunate to have this, this piece of that in your school. And I think just the title Big Bird says where Marvin's humor was. I mean, he was a wonderful, joyful person. And that's really what we need to have with artwork. And so I was the beneficiary of that influence from Marvin. And, uh, and, it, and, it, and it was incredible. So when this showed up in my, or this project kind of showed up and needed help and came to my studio, it's like Marvin visiting, you know, it was, it brought, everything that we had talked and thought about together, you know, right to the forefront and every day. I mean, you had to walk around it because my shop's not that much bigger than this piece of artwork. And the other thing that was funny was that uh, ladybugs came in with the piece. When it came into my shop, suddenly there's like ladybugs everywhere in my shop, you know, these little colorful, joyful insects, you know, and I was like, there's Marvin, you know, he's like, here I am, Dave, right, you know, so... That's kind of my experience with it. And then once it was in my shop, I pretty much had to do whatever Claire told me to do. So I'm gonna let Claire explain to you what she did. Yeah, right. Uh, 
First, I'd like to um, echo everything that um, David has said about the importance of Marvin Oliver's work. I did meet Marvin once at um, some do at the Burke a good number of years ago, the Burke Museum. Um, and I wish I'd had a greater opportunity to get to know him, but I'm <laughs> very aware of the impact his work has had in this region and beyond. So he's a very important artist. So this is a very interesting project. You may have noticed there's a PowerPoint or a series of slides that I'm pointing over there, so I have no idea what <laughs> um, that, that's been running through here. And this is uh, an outline of the whole project from um, Janae and the Arts Commission um, with whom I've had, um, it's a lot of years now. I, I don't know how many years <laughs> I've been doing work for the commission and it's always a pleasure, but this one is really special. So they asked me to come take a look at it. I did, so one of the first shots you saw in this sequence was me up a scissor lift on a very cold day, trying to figure out how it was on the wall and then um, what we could do about taking it down and then preserving it into the future. This is a very interesting project because it is a blend of conservation and restoration. Typically, as a conservator, we do very little intervention. We do the minimum amount we need to do to stabilize something and preserve it into the future. And there's usually a little bit of restoration involved, but typically we try to get it to a point where it's like a snapshot in time and then allow it to continue on. But in this instance, we were looking at doing a restoration and the challenge was to find a way to do this so that we could preserve it into the future and meet the current standards of practice for conservation and collection care, while at the same time honoring the desire to have it repainted so that it um, looked better, as you probably have noticed. So there's a picture right now is actually what it looked like when it was first installed. Um, and over the years, it had weathered terribly. We figured a way to combine conservation treatments with restoration treatments. So David was doing the repainting and I did the work that involved making the wood a little more durable. Um, making the remains of Marvin's paint, there's not a lot of the original paint left, unfortunately, because it was outdoors, but what was left, um, I was able to consolidate. So it's under there. It's still there. Um, and then finding a painting, a way to paint it, which uh, retained the feel of Marvin right down to the tool marks. And it's a little difficult for you to see from down here, but when you're close as we were to, to Big Bird and you get that raking light on it, you can see all of Marvin's ads marks still. They're still there. So those are sort of talking to us through the paint um, I think that's about all we have to say, except I've got a new friend and we're now going to do a comedy act and go on the road because I miss working with you, dude. Uh, Claire's my newest teacher, really. <laughs> learn, you learn a lot from this lady. And me from you. All right. All right. Who's next? So good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Willie Frank III, chairman of the Nisqually Indian Tribe. Honored to be here tonight. I see some friendly faces out there. Um, Tribal Council wanted to come. We wanted to show our support and continued partnership with the Yelm School District. Um, we always got a uh, kind of a running joke going on. So the three of us went to North Thurston School Districts, and these two went to Yelm. So we're always laughing, and it's a good laugh, and we're able to really joke about that, but uh, I'll let my council introduce themselves and then we'll uh, turn it over to Hanford or uh, Maui. Any of the ladies want to say something? Good evening, everybody. My name is Antoinette Squally, um, Vice Chairman for the Squally Tribe. My Indian name is Ask Oblitsa, and I want to thank you for your invitation. And as I stand under what I see as Yaholat, we call this Yaholat, who is one of the biggest birds, but in our Lashutsi language. I'm also a Lashutsi language teacher. That's what we call our brother. 
who watches over us, who takes care of us and provides that um, safety net for everybody on their pathways. To all Chad Squally Ops. Good evening, my name is uh, Yaista Blue. I also go by Shay Squally. Um, I'm the fifth council member for the Nisqually tribe. Um, and I'm very happy to be here and very happy to see this. I've actually never been in this school and seen all this. It looks very nice. I'm glad to be here tonight. Oh, yes, I do live in Yom. <laughs> Uh, good evening. My name is Leanna Scott. I'm the seventh council person for um, the Squally Indian tribe. Um, I think to me, seeing these things, especially since this has been here so long and that the work that goes into maintaining art, um, it is tremendously important. I've had two of my children graduate from this school in the last two years. And in that time, um, seeing how our culture develops into um, the community and the schools around here is, um, you know, it's us moving forward. It's us working together and building partnerships. And that's the, um, that's the ultimate goal. So this is, this is just great. Thank you. So, uh, before Hanford gets in, I just want to talk about, you know, growing up here at, at Frank's Landing, you know, 10 minutes from here in the valley, coming up here to see uh, my uncle, Andrew McLeod, he lived up here and our uncle, my uncle Don as well. So as a kid coming up, I always look forward to coming to Yelm and I don't know why at that time, because there was nothing really here. But now that, it, you know, to come back now and see the growth that the, the city of Yelm has made, it's truly awesome. And I think for us, it's about partnerships and continuing to build partnerships with the Yelm School District, the city of Yelm, and really everybody in Thurston County. So I'm going to put it out there to you, Mr. Wharton, that uh, there's a Nisqually flag hanging at all the North Thurston schools. So I'm just going to put that out there for you, okay? And then I'll turn it over to Hanford here. You know, he's, he's got to throw that out there, of course. But good evening, everybody, and thank you. Uh, I want to thank the council for, for coming. You know, I think... Seeing this growth, like we talk about, but also all of us coming and representing the tribe, representing the people, representing the kids. We were slated to sing a blessing song today. So and some of our canoe family members, you know, we, we are kind of touch and go. So I'm going to actually talk a little bit about art and Marvin Oliver and his work and Emmett Oliver. And, you know, I heard some of the great stories here today on the floor, and I want to carry forth some of those stories because the canoe journey did change my life, changed a lot of the ladies' lives here too, and some of our young ones that we have in our community, and also that go to school here. Um, Jason, stand up for a minute, please. So my son Jason here is a sophomore, right? Sometimes I forget these kids. I'm not saying I'm getting old, but so he's my sophomore going to school here out of our, I would say my youngest, but then I turn around and there's two more standing right there. So you two could stand up, Jezebel and Emmett. And these two currently are, are doing homeschool with, with their mom. So, but we are part of that canoe family and that drumming group that goes around and shares that, that song, you know, and I, I hold the drum up with some of that and to talk about the spirit of artwork. I am an artist myself. Basket weaver by trade, so I wove the hat on my head. And I go out and gather the material also. And it's a, a passion to do that when you go out and actually connect with the land and the material that you're doing the artwork for, right? So when you think about the artwork and the teachers before us, they, they talk about the living passion behind that. And it's your life. So as you weave your life or carve your life, you are going to leave those mistakes. You are going to leave that frustration or that hate, or that anger. But then there's that teaching once you're done, and it comes to life, and you bring it to life, then you talk that good, you know, words, or give it that positive energy before it goes and gets hung, or before it's actually worn, or gifted. And to think about Marvin, and what he did for our art community is, 
is kind of beyond words because to me, I see the Seahawks symbol every time I hear about Marvin Oliver and that symbol when he went into that archives and, and just put it down on a piece of paper to talk about it, right? To say, hey, this could be a possibility and look what we have, a Seahawks symbol that come out of that artwork that he brought to life for this community to take on that presence of a, of a symbol, right? Kind of like what we're looking up here at this big bird here and, this, and what that bird represents, you know, and I wear this vest that was, was, was done by my mother, you know, and she put that artwork of the salmon on there for us. But I was also a skipper of the canoe. And when that canoe came to our family, um, the teachings was there because we have family from Quinault. We have relatives from Quinault here that are also related. And when they started the journey in the 80s and brought it forth into the 90s and then into the 2000s, I say canoe journey is making tribal leaders in all of our communities today. I'm one of them. This young lady here, Shay's one of them. I'd say when I was the skipper, she was my lead puller in front of my canoe. And so when we paddle to these destinations, I always look to her to say, hey, where are we going? Or set a pace for my young ones who want to learn this but don't know, you know, what the paddle means when you pick up a skipper's paddle or when you pick up one of those paddles. I'm going to take a deep breath, take a step back. I was already talking earlier with our council about artwork. You know, so I don't want to get too carried away. The drum that I'm holding here will also represent that, that mountain that we call Rainier, which is Tukultma, which means don't forget the water. And that story that comes from Grandpa Billy Frank Sr., ladies here are doing the language also, which is another passion of art that we have, you know, that's also connected to the tradition of who we are in, in not only in the Squally, but up and down the coast here. So, the mountain design, we have a bag here that also represents it, but that's the connection that we have that goes back thousands of years from the mountain and the stories of, of, of her that breathes life into this lower valley that we have thrived in so, so, so many years here in this lower, lower uh, valley portion here. So Willie. Oh. You are a history teacher. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I watched that to grow up from a young man into this person who stands in front of a crowd of people and talks about the history of the people from the Squally tribe. And his mother, you know, Janet McLeod, who lived up here on Crystal Springs Road. Oh, sorry. Um, I, I, I just want to acknowledge Hanford as being one of our history teachers and, and recognizing, you know, what he's grown up to learn. And, you know, as we come here and work with the Yelm School District, we come up here and share partners. And I know we're not shaking hands right now, but we're bumping elbows. And that's what we're recognizing, that cross-cultural training with each other and provide those types of trainings and services, the language, the culture, the canoe journey, the teachings of Emmett Oliver. You know, we, we um, acknowledged him on the canoe journey as this person who created that the life of those pathways along the Puget Sound all the way into Canada. That was one of our longest trips was to paddle to Bella Bella, almost to Alaska. And it was very, very heartfelt being on that water crossing the Straits of Juan de Fuca and um, seeing those orca, way, orca whale families who led us across the waters because the waters were very treacherous. So I wanna um, thank you guys for your invitation. Thank you for bringing us here. I was a whirlwind, then I was a tornado. Yes, I did go to Yelm School District. <laughs> and I enjoy, I enjoy talking about the history. I enjoy sharing it. I, I, I talk about the experience that goes back two generations, you know, my father to my grandfather. And it's, it's pretty awesome to, to be able to stand and then share that information and, and take you back to a time or to a place you know, where um, I like to say is heaven and paradise all in one, you know, and, and all of our, when you look at all of our uncles and aunties and everyone who had, a, had the, the opportunity to share, especially in this town, and then we'll go into Lacey, you know, it's what I say, I, I grew up here, went to school here, learned how to speak in front of my peers here, talking in a, in a class, I think it was in 10th grade, 
English, and it was speech. And what I talked about was my history, my artwork, and my family. And I'm still doing that today. You know, I'm not going to say how long, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll leave that out there. But we're going to ask the language here to get up and say, well, they're going to say a blessing in the language for this art piece and for our ancestors and for the ones who have passed on, who have given us these teachings today, being able to share them like we are. And um, correct? Am I not? Okay. So we'll just ask everybody to stand there because the song, the songs that we do have, you know, we'll, we'll share them for another time. And I love sharing my songs, but I'm just the one singer. But the language is such an awesome, you know, expression to hear, too. That we wanted to share that tonight also with you guys. So. Swahik Skalali to Haha Kohat to Bush, Oak Edit to Chash, Ask Edit to Chash, Twabak, Sea Ab de Ishid, Squale Abs Chash, Shakat Sheep Chash, Twati, Lok Oak Chash, A Secretary Teeth, Lok Oak, Gossas Hide, Gua Gwabak, Stab, Oak Edit to Chash, Diet Hatch, Tisus O Chash, Otis the Hay. Ask rate to chash at a buck ag beef or to dish it. Tech tooth to eat chash, yap tis yet yay at chash. Lab tooth hogwet. Ark a cake will at big weed hat. Helly eel heel bead gwall. Hat ear bill, elta hogwet. Buck the eashin. Thank you, ladies. So that will conclude our blessing for this art piece. And we want to raise our hands to the school, to the superintendent. I see a lot of familiar faces. I want to say a shout out to Sandra Gordon, who's sitting in the crowd over here, who was also a, a, another big part of, of bringing Hanford, I guess, into the, into the limelight here, working into the schools, because she always didn't want to rely on Hanford, but she did, which was good. So thank you, Sandra. With that, we'll turn it back over to you guys. I don't know who is next here in the, the circle, but thank you guys. Thank you so much. Before we, we move on, um, we did have another elected official come into our ceremony tonight. I'd love to introduce uh, Thurston County Commissioner Carolina Mejia in the back. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Did I hear the chair of the commission? Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, for those of you in our community that might be interested in additional collaborations that we've had with um, uh, the Nisqually Nation, I would invite all of you to go to Nisqually, or not Nisqually, excuse me, Yale Middle School. Um, we have right in the main entrance there, a, a native wall um, that really explains um, a story that I heard Hanford give at um, a Chamber of Commerce meeting. And it was about the connection between the mountain, the river, um, cedar tree, and prairie grass. And that theme goes throughout the design of the building. There's multiple areas within there. You can go in and learn a little bit of native language and also a little bit about the, the themes um, carried within those four concepts. Also opening next September will be our Southworth Elementary School. And that design of the building, when you walk in, there'll be a large map of the Salish Sea and there will be a canoe journey theme that carries throughout the building. And there'll be destinations that you can find uh, where you can learn a little bit more. It combines both history and education, but also sensory education for our students as we have an autism center that will be in that facility as well. I want to conclude tonight by thanking everyone for being here. Um, I really want to appreciate our our um, tribal um, members and elders who are here. We thank you for your participation. I want to thank all of the officials. Desperately want to thank the um, Arts Commission for all the work. We appreciate you very much. Um, it took a lot of Zoom collaboration to get us here, and I appreciate Terry Pablo very much and the tech crew um, for setting up. We did broadcast this um, ceremony statewide, um, and I, I want to thank everybody for participating. And with that, I will say on behalf of everyone in Yelm Community Schools and Yelm High School, thank you for being here. Have a wonderful evening.